Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Monday, the be, uh, beginning of uh, what's going to be a four-day stretch of above normal and much above normal temperatures. And I think we're going to take out some record highs in a few places today and more so Tuesday and Wednesday. As uh, you look here, this is the actual anomalies, uh, departures from normal. And when you get into the uh, lighter pink areas here, you're talking about departures running 15 or more degrees above normal. And, and you can see as we move through uh, Tuesday and Wednesday and even into Thursday, we're seeing uh, much above normal temperatures. Although by the time we get to Thursday, that area does begin to shrink a little because we do have an approaching weather front. Uh, and you can kind of outline it here where the trough is in the upper atmosphere. So you can see where all the below normal temperatures are. So this is how the upper trough basically looks. So, so something like this, okay? And that sort of makes sense um, given how you have the uh, spread of uh, temperatures. Uh, you've got the uh, ridge in the east that's moving offshore. So, you know, everything in the atmosphere kind of always has to make a lot of uh, make a, a sense in, in, in a way. You can make sense of different maps and kind of figure out where things are just by uh, looking at one feature and then corresponding it with another. So if I were to jump now to the uh, upper air map, you can see I, I kind of drew it out uh, pretty evenly. Uh, I'll uh, switch back so you can take a look. So there's that there's the trough that runs in the middle of the country. And, you know, here's the departures from normal. So everything does have a certain pattern to it. Uh, the gears are there all turning. Uh, the gears are constantly changing in, in size, in strength, and they're turning the other gears and so on and so on. Now, uh, I, I want to focus uh, on the tropical system that's going to be developing uh, in off the southeast coast of the United States. And, and you can see it here. This is, this is for Friday, Thursday evening, um, right in here. But I'll back it up for you so you can get a flavor for how this starts to develop. And it actually, the low center begins to appear uh, overnight tonight. Uh, does it really, if you look at the way the radar is structured, this kind of, you know, sort of upside down U shape in terms of the um, echoes, there's not really a whole lot going on near the center. So this, to me, suggests that this may at least start out as subtropical in nature and then maybe gradually over time, so as we move into Thursday, uh, as the uh, convection starts to concentrate more near the center, this starts to look more like a tropical system. Now, it, it does arc it back west, but it never really quite makes it to the Bahamas before it begins a northward course. And you know, ultimately, the overnight weather models took everything, you know, pretty much north and then northeast to the to the southeast of us, and it's and it's all going to really depend on um, the how the upper trough evolves and whether it it remains progressive. In other words, whether it remains um, a system that moves west to east, because if this moves west to east, then the system that's out in the Atlantic is going to move out to the northeast, but um, the issue on some of the earlier runs days ago was that the models were trying to dig this down rather than push it eastward, just kind of uh, have it set as a feature west and south of us and holding there. So if that were to happen, then the winds along the east coast would back to more southerly, and then this would take a more northerly course. Um, I, I, I kind of think, based on what I've been seeing so far, that uh, that seems to be the least likely so solution to all of this. Um, mainly because of the fact that we just went through a situation with Matthew where models were showing phasing and it never happened. Although at the last minute we did get, um, we get we got the system to at least enhance an approaching cold front in terms of moisture, and we had nor'easter-like conditions over some of the coastal areas of New Jersey and Long Island. I suppose I couldn't rule that out completely. But let's see how the day run was day run of the models uh, evolves through all of this now. Uh, just looking at the, um, let me get out of this here, and you can want to see the area of disturbed weather. Right now, there really isn't too much organized here. Uh, you can see there's a large area of clouds and showers, most of them on the loop. When we put it back into motion, you'll see they were blowing away uh, to the northeast. There's no real sign of any kind of 
uh, circulation, low-level circulation center, at least not yet. There probably will be uh, the sign of a broad area of low pressure forming uh, later today, and we'll evaluate this uh, as we uh, go through uh, the rest of today and into uh, the next few days. So record highs, uh, weather still remains dry. There's no real rain in sight for the drought-stricken areas of the, the northeastern uh, part of the country, particularly northern New Jersey. Long Island and, and uh, the Hudson Valley and parts of southern New England. We'll see what happens later on this week. Uh, don't forget to check out the latest website posts on meteorologistjoechaffee.com, also weatherlongisland.com and nycweathernow.com, and, of course, ssstormchasers.com uh, for uh, whatever you're looking for as far as storm chasing is concerned, because those guys really know how to do it well.